So welcome everybody to our talk today, Explore Your Spirituality. I'm Michael Dalton from Bioenergy Healing, and I'm, I'm excited to bring this uh, uh, talk to you tonight. Explore Your Spirituality is such a big, uh, such a big subject, right? Like, um, how do we fit all of that into a little, to a, to a talk? But it's, um, I've, I've been working as a practitioner for over 30 years. And uh, I always think there's a couple of like team themes that come up for people. And one of them is all is like always, what's my purpose? The amount of people that come for healing who uh, they, they're not sure what their purpose is. They're looking for their purpose. They feel there's something missing and they want to explore their purpose. It, it's a common, a common theme that happens in, in healing. And I think another one too is, our spirituality, which, you know, sometimes life gets busy and we just have to get on with life. So we don't always get a chance to really, um, really have the time to really investigate and explore spirituality. It's, it's something often more that happens, you know, in the background. It's like uh, the books you're reading, the workshops you're doing. It's, it's often, you know, family, bills, life, children, uh, relationships putting dinner on the table these kind of things kind of take priority a lot right and so um the idea of our spirituality though you know when we're young we might have these questions like what's the meaning of life after a while when we get kind of busy we kind of stop asking those questions but I kind of feel like, like those questions they keep coming around again and again and maybe at different times in our life we're ready to investigate it we're ready to ask those questions we're ready to find out you know what is it that is missing because there's often this like deep wound or di this deep hole in the collective consciousness of something is missing and how can we find out what that is and how can we fill that and as well as that people looking for what is their purpose and what's the meaning of life I think a lot of I've mentioned this in previous talks but one of the one of the things that comes up a lot in healing is a lot of illness and sickness, emotional strife, problems that people have. A lot of stuff can really come down to like almost like a single ingredient. And I'm just going to give it to you straight out. And because I've mentioned it before, but I'll just jump straight there is it, a lot of it comes down to a lack of self-love. You know, so much of people's problems come down to a lack of self-love from wherever that came from, whether it's, you know, par parents, pro par problems with your parents or conditioning, programming, wounding, trauma, wherever that might come from. A lot of a lot of the problems that uh, take us out of our alignment to our true self is this 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 uh disconnection this disconnection from the true self and as we have that disconnection and we have this lack of self-love a lot of our actions a lot of things that we do are often motivated sometimes with wounds or through pain and sometimes i think our our, our uh process is one of returning back to returning back to love you know returning back to that process so when people say like what is what's the meaning of life you know there's a there's a lot of books written on this and there's a lot of philosophies around it and there's great uh psychologists who speak about this thing but i sometimes i my process in bioenergy is just like how do you simplify everything right like how do you bring everything back as simple as you can and i think one one of the things that i would say is like in terms of of life itself like what's our meaning for being alive i i sometimes wonder why is it not enough that being alive why is that not enough why does there have to be more than that why is the fact that we're alive not enough right like we're alive right that is that not enough and you think in in terms of like like a flower right 
what's the purpose of of a flower right like it it starts out as a bud and it eventually blooms and you know what's the purpose of a flower well it's to bloom isn't it it's to it's to it just does its thing and then it blooms it shows up and it blooms like the the very nature the very purpose of a flower is simply to express itself right to express itself to come into its full expression to you know we call it blooming right when the flower blooms and then after it blooms it kind of disappears again and then might come back in another season you know and I don't know if reincarnation is like that that we come into life we express ourselves we die we come back into life we express ourselves we die but it tends to be that things have a way of moving in waves rhythms patterns and cycles so whether it's seasons or you know just it's like we have a full moon tonight so there's there's patterns and cycles right and so whether reincarnation is part of like that that we we move through cycles come around again and again to experience things but in terms of being alive like a lot of a lot of times with healing people are really striving all the time, right? They're pushing themselves very hard to achieve or accomplish. And, and then unfortunately, you know, they might get sick and they come in for healing and you're helping them discover, you know, why did they get sick? And how, how do you get this person who's sick? How do you get them healthy again? So how do you get them from that direction that they're moving in where their sickness is getting worse? And how do you get them to where they're, you've turned their health around where now they're actually healthy. And I, I feel that in, in so many ways that the process of healing has so much to do with the meaning of life because I found many, many times in healing that when people aren't expressing themselves, when they're not fulfilling their expression, just like the flower you know, like the bud blooming into the flower. When we're not expressing our creativity, we die inside. You know, we literally die. I see all the heads nodding, right? Because you know, right? Like I'm not saying like this is this is me 30 years of doing healing, trying to break it down into its simplicity for you, right? That when people are not expressing their creativity, they're fucking dying inside and nothing is worse than you know working at a job that you hate a job that you don't like just to pay your bills and take care of your family and of course that's a, a wonderful noble thing but a part of you can be dying on the inside and then you know people get sick literally their body is like getting ill or sick or dying from the inside out you know and it's like in some way we've gone out of alignment with the nature of life, you know? So I come back to them, well, what's the nature of life? Well, the nature of life is flow and movement. It's always changing, isn't it? Like life is always changing. It moves in waves and rhythms and patterns and cycles, and it's always changing. And, you know, so tonight, well, my, my goal was to kind of like touch into this subject of exploring our spirituality and our purpose and unraveling some of that and giving some insights into um, how I see that unfold, like true healing and how, you know, I've been very fortunate to help a lot of people who have been sick to recover their health, like to get fully healthy again, even though they've been sick for 10 20 30 years and within that formula of helping people get better you know there's a couple of things that you discover you discover about you discover things about how people are thinking how they're communicating how they're participating in life how they're interacting with other people you discover very quickly like i find you know it's you're very quickly able to discover do people like the work that they do or not? And I, I don't know, but I always put that into, into a category with illness because I think it's where we spend a lot of our time, right? Like you spend, in fairness, 
you spend most of your time in work, whether you realize it or not, right? Like you spend most of your day is focused on work in one way or another. And so if you're doing a work that you're really not enjoying, I, I personally, I think it makes people sick. I think it's, it catches up with them. You know, I, I don't think you have to be doing something that, you know, you absolutely love. I mean, that's why they call it work, right? Like, you know, it's work, right? So you, you don't have to absolutely love it. But I think if you hate it, I think that's soul destroying. That destroys your soul. So um, I, I don't know. I always just encourage as people are, are returning to health, I always trying to find out, are you going back to the job that you were doing before you got sick? And I watch their response. And I know from their response that if they don't change jobs, they're not going to get better. Because being sick is their way of not going back to the job. And getting better means they have to go back to the job. And I know before they know, I, I know that they're going to sabotage, sabotage their recovery. Because some deeper, meaningful purpose inside of them is moving them out of what they don't want to do and moving them into something that is more fulfilling for them, right? It's the, the universe in its beauty and magnificence is trying to shift and move you over to receiving more of the good things in life, to doing more of the things that nourish your soul and bless your soul and, and, you know, the universe is always trying to move you through those things, but we're, we're sometimes we're so attached to the paycheck. We're so attached to the experience that we have, you know, well, I have to work at this because that's what my experience is, you know? And so, and, and, and pretty normal, right? Like that's not, there's not anything crazy about that. That's just a normal thing. And yet, what I find is that there's sometimes a deeper meaning behind illness and sickness. I find like people don't just get sick. You don't wake up one day and get sick, you know. So when as a as a healer and a teacher who works with this this work, you're always looking at um, I, ca I call it the independent research of Michael, you know. So when someone is sick, I'm always wanting to know what's going on in their life. Right. Like, where's your stress? Is it? like is it with your family is it with your food is it with um exercise is it with uh your career is it with your finances and as you start to identify where people's stresses are you know in fact sometimes you look at their illness and you can tell where the stress is in their body you know i've talked about this before but just to kind of gently touch about it when there's problems with people's shoulders they tend to feel like burden. They tend to feel like they're taking on a lot of responsibility, sp specifically within the family. When they have problems with the digestive system or stomach, they tend to have trouble processing stuff that's happening in work. When they have problems in and around the heart chakra or the back of the heart chakra, which can be also the lungs, they tend to be having trouble with relationships and specific partner or their parents. When they have trouble on one shoulder, that can be like a chip on the shoulder. So something that they're holding on to that they haven't been able to let go of. You know, problems with their eyes, there's things that they don't want to see. There's things that they don't want to look at. Problems with their ears, there's things they don't want to listen to. Problems with their legs, they have trouble moving forward. You know, so the body is often like communicating where we've stopped, like, uh, flowing <laughs> where we've stopped blossoming the areas of our life where we're, where we've stopped blossoming the body is kind of showing us those areas sometimes a stuck energy blocked energy which over time can become illness or sickness in the body and that's why i say we don't we don't just wake up one day we're getting ill or sick usually there's a there's a lot of warnings before we get ill or sick um you know, even when people get heart attacks, which seems kind of like sudden and out of nowhere. I mean, I've treated a lot of people who have had heart attacks and every single one of them says to me that they know it's coming. They knew it was coming. And I'm like, well, how did you know it was coming? And they're like, everybody told me, everybody knew. They said, if you don't slow down, you're going to have a heart attack. You know, so, 
people recognize those things, right? Um, they recognize like that if you're if you're going and going and going and you're not slowing down, <laughs> you know, you can get a heart attack. And they sometimes people warn people of that. And then when the person gets their heart attack, they say, well, I, I was warned. I just didn't listen, you know. And so I, I always find that like really interesting that <clears throat> maybe that's other people's intuition. They're recognizing like patterns, right? And then they're trying to let you know, like you need to slow down. And 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 I think that this process of slowing down, I think that's really significant and important when it comes to us exploring our sphere because life is often moving so fast like work is moving fast family's moving fast bills are moving fast like every month you have another if not the same bills coming in again like every month you've got your rent you've got your mortgage you've got what have you but the same like a different month but same things over and over and so we we sometimes we get caught in the momentum of of repetition like life is very much about repetition so we repeat the same things we kind of eat the same foods we watch the same tv shows we meet the same people we wear the same clothes you could have you could have a whole wardrobe of different clothes and wear the same clothes week to week right like it's just these are patterns that we do as humans so we can have this idea like oh i really want to like um i want to explore like the deeper meaning of why there's times in my life i feel empty and and what's the spiritual meaning behind that and we can have these questions but sometimes the repetition in life just carries carries us on uh last week i mentioned this term um it was like i call it the like auto response right so we're on this auto response we're just like we're it's auto response is just like a reaction we're just reacting to situations that happen and um, as we're reacting to these situations that happen we're on an automatic pilot and so one of the things that i've learned in in healing is that like that as a when you're teaching people like healing techniques if you if someone is doing a technique wrong so say they're just they've learned a technique and they're doing it incorrectly and you want to have them do the technique correctly one of the one of the best ways to help them learn the technique correct after they've learned it incorrectly is to slow them down i i would say there's no other like effective tool you know maybe elect electro shock them or something i don't know but there's no there's no more effective tool than slowing things down and i think that's one of the like this this is the most beautiful ingredient because when we slow things down we become more aware of what's happening and so when if someone is repeating something at the same speed that they normally do it they're going to repeat the same mistake but if you slow down as you're repeating the technique because you're going slow enough you're actually able to engage your consciousness to make the necessary changes and i'd, I'd learned that through uh martial arts through kung fu and that was that was like honed into us you know through the uh, sifu was uh, um was to like slow down and practice the technique over and over going really slowly and then you would rewire your brain because you're going slow enough to make the changes and i i don't know i use that as i use that as my practice for everything right like i slow things down and then i'm able to observe oh that's what i'm doing you know see even in a conversation you slow down the conversation with a pause have you ever found yourself like in an argument or something and you're just going back and forth and back and forth and before you know it you're kind of like you're disappointed at that level of communication and one of the, one of the beautiful things you can do is you pause in between uh, in a conversation you people forget to pause right i i forget to pause i'm speaking so much <laughs> i'm going to pause for some water but when we're 
when we don't pause, we're just on this auto response, right? Automated response. And one of the beautiful things in conscious communication, I mean, it, it, it is what it says it is, right? Conscious communication as opposed to <laughs> unconscious communication. But conscious communication where we pause and we listen to what's being said. And you could even take what the person said and actually say it back to them as the way of clarifying if you understand what they're saying. Because, you know, that's the biggest problem with communication is misunderstanding, isn't it? Like we misunderstand each other sometimes in the way that we speak. And so you you slow down because we have this process of just wanting to react. Someone says something and we're already thinking of what we want to say, right? And the moment we're thinking about what we want to say, we're not listening anymore. We've stopped listening, you know. I, even like even in teaching, I was sharing before, like as a teacher, one of the things that people do in their minds is when they say, oh, I know that. When people say, I know that, that's one of the ways that your mind stops learning new information. So all information shuts down. The moment you say, I know that, you stop learning, you know, and it's it's your it's your body's way of just retaining what you already know and not having to challenge itself right so it stays inside the comfort zone oh we have multiple protective mechanisms to keep us semi-unconscious one might one might say but um yeah so like we come back then to this like what if what if the meaning of life like what if being alive is enough like the 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 bud to the flower or the the caterpillar to the butterfly what about that right the the caterpillar in its life process transforms into a butterfly it, it doesn't push or force anything it's just what happens just like the the flower given the right environment the right ingredients the sun the water the earth given the right environment the flower blossoms that's its nature it's its sole purpose is to express itself. What if what if our purpose is really to be here, just to be here? Messy, beautiful, horrible, you know, wonderful, magical life that it is. It's all the things. Is not life like incredibly amazing and beautiful and magical and wonderful? and loving and kind and you know but isn't life also really fucking challenging hard difficult you know crazy especially in the world right now you know it's gone local right the world is crazy and yet it's also magical it's like all of the things and so much like when you're unraveling like one spirituality and you realize like well what's I think one of the questions I've asked myself, like when I when in exploring spirituality is this is like, well, what's what's real? Like what's true? And I've always thought to myself that like truth is really important. How could it not be right? Like truth is is in relation to the chakras is the throat chakra. The throat chakra is about speaking truth, finding truth and being truthful right so they say when we genuinely have something to say there's someone who genuinely needs to hear it but i think in my process of spirituality and trying to find truth especially when it comes to like illness and sickness and health and well-being life and death and and the meaning of life what's the damn truth what's the truth you know i think breaking it down again into the simplicity of it I found that there isn't one level of truth, you know, as much as in my mind, I've wanted to make, no, no this is real and this is wrong. So this is true and this is false. The, the mind really wants to separate truth and falsehood. And that's the duality thinking. It's, it's, it's part of the makeup that we have is that we're born through the root chakra, which is the first of the seven chakras and we split into duality 
and we process and we filter and we observe the nature of everything through that duality. And then eventually we return back to the crown chakra, which is the oneness and the unity consciousness again. But in terms of our process in life, we get caught in this, the duality process. And what I found with truth is that there isn't one truth. Truth is like a ladder. You know the way the ladder has different runs on the ladder? Well, it depends on which run you're standing on. Because each run of the ladder that you go up, you know, things can be true at one level and then not be true at another level. And so it's like something could be true for you, but not true for everybody else. Right? Now, you might say, well, if something is true, it's always true. And there's truth in that. But that's a higher level of truth. Right? Because someone's personal truth could be different than collective truth. Now, you could have one person who believes something that isn't true. We call that a delusion. But you could have a whole lot of people believe something that isn't true. And we call that an illusion. I mean, that, the Mayans had a name for it. They called it Maya, <laughs> the illusion. Illusion, right? Maya means illusion. So when, we, when our whole collective consciousness believes things that aren't true that's illusion and so the these ancient teachings where people said like um everything is an illusion i mean even einstein said everything's an illusion albeit a very persistent one right you know everything's an illusion albeit a very persistent one it's it's not so much that life is an illusion and it's also not that your body is an illusion because in the spiritual kind of community, sometimes people say, well, your body's an illusion, right? Your body's not real. Well, there's, there's a truth in that, but there's also, your body is also very real, right? Your body, your, your body is very real and your body needs love and it needs food and it needs hugs and it needs all the good things, right? Your body your body needs those things and your body, your body doesn't like when you call it an illusion, when you say it's not real, your body is very real, right? It's, it's part of your experience here on life and it's, your body is beautiful and it's magical and it's wonderful and it does so much for us, right? And it, it's, it really is the vessel in which we get to live and experience our senses through our body, right? So on one level, you can say, well, the body's an illusion because when you take the body and you put it on an electron microscope and you look at the you look at the body on an electron microscope, you say, well, the body is actually empty space. And so under the electron microscope, that is true. So the science of, of the body is that the body is empty space and that is true. But there's also a truth that your body is real and physical and tangible and emotional and mental and it's all and that's also true you know and so there's different levels of truth on the ladder and so the the process of of sometimes awakening is discovering and unraveling like an onion unraveling truth unraveling the layers of truth and going deeper and peeling the layers of yourself away to discover more of who and what it is that you are. Does that make sense? Just like the caterpillar to the butterfly, it's like from the unconscious automated human, we unravel ourselves, we're peeling away the layers, we're discovering the truth about ourselves, you know, and then what's the other side of that? unconscious human it's coming into consciousness coming into self-realization coming into peace and love and joy the conscious human you know and some some people suggest that we're at a, a phenomenal time in history right now where like in past history there has been a couple of enlightened beings that have walked on this planet and some people suggest that in our lifetime, in our lifetime, not in our, not in our great, 
grandchildren's lifetime, but in our lifetime, that humanity is going through a massive spiritual shift where humanity is collectively waking up and opening up and coming into full consciousness. Holy shit, right? In our lifetime. And that's why when people say, you know, I sometimes you hear people say, oh, life is amazing. I don't know. I don't know if it is. Like it's life is friggin' challenging, right? Like life, life is, it's all of it, right? It's, you know, when people say, like, ah, oh, you know, life, life is beautiful and amazing, you know, really life is in happy camp life has difficulties and it's challenging and it's difficult and often when the people are like they're happy out in front of people well they might be suicidal when they're at home right so life is is complex right it's it's quite complex and yet at the same time breaking it down into its absolute simplicity we also take it way too seriously we take life way too seriously. And that's one of the things that I've learned with illness and sickness is a lot of times, like the number one thing with like headaches and migraines is people take people being too serious, right? The, if, if you're having headaches or migraines, you know, just observe that about yourself. Are you a serious person? You know, because people with migraines especially tend to be very serious. Now you might say, well, I'm serious because I have the migraine. And it's like, well, really? Mm, which one came first? <laughs> you know? So in terms of like unraveling our truth, unraveling ourselves in, in this kind of like spiritual exploration tonight, um, I, I often think like, so if, if seriousness makes us heavy, if seriousness lowers our, our frequency, worry and fear and guilt and shame, if those things kind of lower energy, then what uplifts our energy, what raises our energy? And I think that the lightest version of us, get this, the lightest version of us is us in are you ready for it? It's us in the present moment. <sighs> Firework. <laughs> you know, the lightest version of us is us when we're in the friggin' present moment. Oh, everything makes sense. When we're fully engaged in the present moment, there's no sack of there's no lack of self-love. There's no lack of self-love. There's no explaining yourself. There's no justifying yourself. There's no blaming other people. There isn't even blame in the present moment. It doesn't exist. It's made up. It's from all the wounding. People do shit to you, you do blame them. <laughs> you know, that's all conditioning, programming, thinking. But in the present moment, blame. Guilt, shame, it's just not there. There's a, a map, map of human consciousness, a wonderful book, if you haven't read it, Power Versus Force by David Hawkins. And they talk about the scale of consciousness. So in terms of like um, mapping out consciousness on the scale of zero to 1,000. And 1,000 being like enlightenment, like... Um, excuse me, like Christ consciousness, full enlightened is 1,000 on the scale. And then um, the lowest energy on that scale would be shame. Shame is one of the lowest frequencies that we can be in. It's, it vibrates at about 20, you know. And then at fear, like you go up the scale, it goes like shame, which is 20, guilt is 30, apathy is 50, um, grief is 75, and fear would be 100. So at that, at a, at, if you're in a lot of fear, you're, you're below, you're in that 100 scale of consciousness. And then from that, from that, we go up to desire, which is 125, anger, 150, uh, Pride 175 and courage 200. So at 200, we're starting now to come out of those lower frequencies, out of those lower energies. And that the 
majority, a large portion of the population, uh, David Hawkins said, is lower than that 200 frequency. Like a large portion of people are living in fear, guilt, shame, grief. They're living below the level of 200. And then you have like the ones that manage to, they've moved, they're outside of that 200 or above that, that courage, which is um, more like a neutrality at 250. Then beyond that, you go to willingness, which is a uh, 350 and reason is 400. And um, I think the most, the most beautiful one, of course, the most significant one was love. Love vibrates at a frequency of 500. So they've measured the different frequencies and love vibrates at 500. Joy vibrates at 540 and peace vibrates at 600. And at 600, um, from 600 to 700, that's the kind of doorway into enlightenment. So from 700 to 1,000, a person is fully enlightened or self-realized at that point. And so there's, on this scale of consciousness, using the process of kinesiology, they've been able to um, test the vibration of the frequencies of different words and the frequencies of energy that people carry in their bodies, their level of consciousness, their level of awareness. And um, it's a really fascinating process. And, and I think a lot of people have taken that map of consciousness and have used it. So it's a well-known, it's a well-known, um, well-known one by David Hawkins. I think in terms of people that, um, people that have this sense of like that there's something awakening or opening up inside of them or that their life they've always had this like quest for like what's the meaning of life what's my purpose i've i found like that people in though in that kind of energy you know surprisingly enough to themselves you know as i said there's there's nobody worst enemy you have no worst enemy other than yourself right Sometimes we have a really bad view or bad opinion of ourselves. And, you know, when I read out that scale of consciousness, you know, what's your first thought? Is your first thought, shit, my, my, my level on that scale of consciousness is really low? Or is your, is your thought process, my le level is really high on that scale of consciousness? And probably everything in between. But generally because of awareness we tend to be higher than actually what we think we are right which is a beautiful thing so you could have like a lot of people in a low low vibration but you could also have one person in a high vibration who is balancing out hundreds of thousands of people in lower vibrations it, it's such a fascinating thing you could have one person in a vibration of joy, which is like five, 540 on the scale of consciousness. And they could be balancing out 750,000 people who are in fear, just one person. And this is the power of, of consciousness, also the power of positivity, like in terms of, you know, sometimes people really worry like, oh, I'm you know, I, I have a lot of negative thoughts. Like people say to me, I have like a lot of negative thoughts. And I'm like, yeah, it, it's okay. You don't have to replace that with all positive thoughts, right? You don't have to replace all negative thoughts with positive thoughts. You just have to have a positive thought. One positive thought replaces a lot of negative thoughts because the vibration of, of the positive is so much higher because it's light. And just like, even in a full dark room, you only need the smallest light to light up a whole room that's dark, right? Like light is incredibly powerful. That's why in, in healing work, you know, energy healers are called light workers, right? Because we're adding light to the unconscious. We're bringing the darkness, the shadow out into the light, you know, and that's the best disinfectant for the darkness, <laughs> is light bringing it into the conscious awareness speaking to the things that normally go unconscious and bringing them into awareness bringing them into consciousness and so this is one of the ways that when people are ill or sick they have been unaware that they've been getting in, ill and sick 
They've been unaware that their that their journey has been leading them towards illness and sickness. And so as a healer, you're helping them discover the parts of themselves that they haven't been able to put light on. You're helping them discover the parts of them that is suppressed or hidden or in the shadow. And you're helping to bring that into awareness, helping that to heal. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. Um, so in terms of, um, I come back to this, the lightest version of us, everything circles around, right? <laughs> the lightest version of us is us in the present moment. That is, that is the lightest version of ourselves is us in the present moment. And so in terms of that, that's what I'm always like in my work, I'm always looking to help people move more into the present moment. Now, how do you help people come into the present moment? It's helping them release the wounds of the past. Because as long as we're holding on to our wounds, they keep pulling us into the past. And then what we do is we take those wounds and then we project them forward into the future. And so now the past is directing and controlling our future. It's even filtering our future. Imagine if you had a pair of glasses and something happened where the glasses got really dirty. You know, they got some mud on the glasses and now you're wearing those glasses and you're, what you're looking at is filtered by the mud on the glasses, right? And, and you can barely see out the glasses because the, the lenses are so dirty, but Imagine you just, you don't know how to clean them. You can't reach the lenses. Like if you're driving your car and you can't get to the outside window and your wipers are not working, you can't get to the outside to clean it, right? And so you're, you're looking at things through that filter. Well, the same happens for us. Like our eyes are looking out into the world, but our memories, our memories, our wounding, our experiencing are filtering what we're seeing. So a lot of times we're definitely not seeing truth. And if we are seeing truth, what level of truth are we seeing? Where are we on the ladder? Where are we on the scale of consciousness? Because if you're trapped in fear, how you perceive the world is going to be through a filter of fear. And that's going to be true for you. It doesn't mean that it's true, but it is true for you, right? And you, if you're perceiving through like courage, which is 200. So say you're, you have this feeling of like you're courageous and you get things done and you move through things and, and life is an adventure and you're hard working and you get things. Like you're looking through that filter, through the filter of courage and you will filter your experiences, right? And so I, I often mention in the courses like that, we're like, we're always Two, two things I always mention, of course, is one is you're always right. And two, you're always winning, right? So think of it this way. If you're filtering things through your own experience, then you're always going to see what you're looking for because you're the one who's doing the filtering, the observing, and the editing. So you're always going to be right. And then with that said, you're always winning, right? Because if you're if you're always thinking that that something is not working out for you, then you're winning at being that person where things are not working out for you. If you're the person who's always in a bad relationship, you're winning at being the person who's always in a bad relationship. You're you're an expert at that. If there's a loser out there, you'll find them and marry them. You're an expert at that, right? That's what you're winning at. So you're always winning just as someone else is winning at, you know, all oh, life's an adventure and I'm having a great time. And, you know, everybody's winning at their at their truth. Right. So I've always tried to like explore, well, what is truth then if if everybody's right and we're all exploring it in different ways? You know what? How how does spirituality fit into this? And a couple of kind of things I you know, I unraveled with that is that like two parts. So um, one part would be in terms of energy. People often talk about good energy and bad energy. As an energy healer, you always you always hear people saying, 
where are you throwing that bad energy? <laughs> you know, it's like people have this perception. Well, if there's good energy, there's bad energy. And, you know, as a healer, you always say, well, it's not good energy or bad energy. It's raw energy. And they're like, what? What do you mean raw energy? You know, because I know if I know a few really negative people, you know, and, you know, they definitely have bad energy, you know, and in terms of like energy, it's not that there's bad energy and good energy. The, there's positive and negative. Positive and negative is like the battery or the magnet. It's a positive and a negative charge of energy. But negative isn't bad by itself, right? So, you know, just like you might think, so, oh, if someone's really negative, yeah, but someone else or from their perception, they think of themselves as being, you know, positive, right? So um, their mother thinks of them as being positive. So it's how we perceive things determines so much of our experience, right? So what I discovered was that there's just raw energy. And then what we do with that or how we perceive it determines whether we experience it as good, bad, right, wrong, heaven, hell, you know, so there's just energy. And then we experience it and we filter it and we shape it and we form it. So just like electrons, like in quantum mechanics, electrons can become waves or particles and waves are just pure potentiality and particles are the fixed things that they become. And so before something is physical and tangible, it's, it's just a potential to become something. And then as we observe something, as the nature of observation, so as we observe something through our filtered perception, then we shape and form. We collapse that field of infinite possibilities and we collapse it into a single possibility determined by the filter that we're using. Boom. <laughs> not, not to go too deep on you tonight, but... Um, It's good stuff though, right? Like unraveling yourself is good stuff, you know? So on one level, we have that, that there's just raw energy. And then what we do with that raw energy determines true perception, kind of what happens. And then on the other, other part that I want to talk about was, I kind of think of in terms of if we're kind of breaking down consciousness a little bit or awakening a little bit, um, or conscious awareness, we're trying to, break this down a bit the first one of the first kind of processes is this level of consciousness where people believe life happens to me so you know people have this thing like life happens to me and a lot of times when people have that life happens to me it can be like a victim consciousness so this happens to me. So a lot of people who come in with like illness and sickness or people who've been people who've been ill for 20 years or 30 years. There's often this sense of this has happened to me. You know, there's often this sense of, you know, something happened. This happened to me. This is why I'm sick. And there can be a sense of like a victimhood. There can be a sense of that there's no way out, there's no escape, that they don't have any power to change anything. And so that first level of, of consciousness, and there, I, I'm going to say there's also nothing wrong with it, because just like you don't blame the caterpillar for being a caterpillar before it becomes a butterfly, right? You don't blame the flower for being a bud before. It's just a different stage of life, right? So there's a stage of life in which we can be part of the victim consciousness. And it's not, to, it's not to blame you for being part of the victim consciousness because the victim consciousness is all about blame. It's not to make you feel guilty and shame for being part of that, but it's simply to, 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 to bring awareness in. There's a level of consciousness, which is where we're blaming other people. We're blaming, we're just in the blame game. We're in the blame game, right? And a lot of times when you're around people who are in the blame game, you don't want to be around them, right? And especially if you've been realizing that maybe you're not down there at fear and guilt and shame. Maybe you're vibrating up there. 
at reason, you know, or at love at 500 or at joy, 540. Maybe you're vibrating up there. Maybe you're on this planet at this time because you're vibrating on the vibration, the frequency of love. Maybe you have a feeling that, hey, why can't we all just love each other? <laughs> you know, it sounds like um, uh, a, uh, a Beatles song, right? Like, you know, why can't we all just love each other? And it might, it just might not make sense to you that why there's wars and why there's like, why these systems of banking and corporations, why they don't actually, why, why, why there isn't enough food for everyone to eat, how, how people can even be starving or people can be living in poverty. Like it doesn't make sense when there is so much abundance on the earth, you know? And so you know, a lot of times when we feel like we're in a lower frequency, it's not because you're you're necessarily a negative person, but it's just you're feeling the pain and the anguish of humanity. Because a deeper knowing inside of you, your inner truth knows that we are love. Love isn't something that you give and you receive. Love is who you are. It's what you are. It's a core, like the it's it's the core of when we peel away the layers we are love and so when we're living in a way that we look at life and we're like these systems aren't they don't seem to be loving they don't seem to be taking care of people they don't like it's more like self-interest and self-gain rather than than the care of each other you know and so you might find in your life that you're you have this like want to be of service, want to help people, right? The the from you've moved out of that like self-service in into into being of service, right? So that that first level of consciousness that life happens to me is 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 in that victimhood, is in that lower frequency. And then from that, from that energy we're there's a lot of blame blaming people the, one of the things in healing is even, even in the level one bioenergy workshop so there's a good few of you here who's who've done level one bioenergy workshop and you'll know that one of the exercises in it is give up blame right if you remember back to your level one bioenergy like you know this is why i'm teaching this in level one bioenergy because the very first step was about taking back responsibility. And that brings us up into the second level of consciousness. So from life happens to me, which is the victimhood, to life happens for me. So life happens for me or even by me. In that level that life happens for me or, or by me, we've given up blame. We've shifted into taking personal responsibility. There's a there's an ownership on. You could even say law of attraction. You're actually seeing that, hey, you get to what you're thinking and feeling is showing up in your life. That not, not to say that you're manifesting everything and you're the cause of everything, but on some level, you start to realize that you're co-creating with the universe, right? On some level, you start to see, hey, the things I'm putting out into the world are coming back to me right and you start to align yourself with you know if i keep blaming others then others are going to keep blaming me and you start to see this as a responsibility of you stop you stop here's the most beautiful thing with the second level of consciousness you stop projecting onto other people boom right there that's it you stop projecting onto other people And that's really empowering, right? Like it's really empowering when we stop projecting onto other people because you start to see like it's a reflection of your consciousness back to you. That other people are a mirror, they're a reflection of you back to you, right? And that, that's part of this now moving up to higher levels of truth. So as we start to come back to the self, we start to move through higher levels of truth. The life happens for me is empowering but also there's still a bit of ego in there right life is happening for me 
right? There's still some ego there. Of like, life is happening for me. It's definitely better than the victimhood, but we don't have to stop there, right? It doesn't stop there. So, you know, I in, in my process of like trying to help people understand this and, and not just like, like I'm just sharing with you tonight, but it's like, you know, it's kind of like you have to earn it, right? Like you have to practice and you have to integrate things in order to really understand them, right? So you have to, yes, you learn the information, but you've got to practice it to integrate it. And so in my level two bioenergy training, the process of inter integration is life happens through me. Life happens through me, you know? And that's really like, you know, practitioner training is helping people understand that healing is happening through them. You, you know, when people say I'm a healer, nobody's a healer, but everybody's a healer, right? There's a level of truth in which nobody is a healer, but there's also a level of truth in which everybody is a healer. Now, what I mean by that is that your body heals itself. Your body has the ability and the capacity to heal itself your body is frigging amazing you cut yourself your body heals it you bruise yourself your body heals it you break a bone your body heals it right but yet if you get arthritis or back pain or cancer you know why doesn't your body heal it well we have this process where we've interrupted we've interrupted that flow where healing flows through us and so then the purpose of the healer is to help us come in and get out of the way because now our conditioning and our programming has come in and has, has taken away that innocence of the body healing itself. And so a person can participate in someone else's healing and help them get out of their own way so that their body can come back to heal itself. So the body, like the spirit, the body is love. And so when love flows freely and when love is freely received in the body the body heals itself the body is a miracle the body is miraculous when the body fully fully receives love in every cell the body fully heals itself it's miraculous it's timeless you know there ain't, there is nothing that the body can't heal when the body fully receives love fully fully received so the healer healer as, as such is is really us inside all, all of us are the healer but then all also all of us can help other people you know because when we love we heal so when we love others we heal you don't need to be in love with someone to heal them your your love for your fellow human being which is really compassion and acceptance and kindness right that your capacity to witness another human being without sin, with, with innocence, to witness another person in their beauty, you know, that that, that lifts them out of their, their fear, guilt, shame. And it, if you can see them with love, then maybe they can see themselves with love. And in that moment, all their karma is burned. And we have the capacity to do that for each other. So, this third level of consciousness, life happens through me. I would say that's that's presence. And that's for me, that's what bioenergy practitioner training is about. Like it's, you know, yes, it's training people for healing, but there there's for me, there it has always been a, a spiritual process, right? Like you're you're helping people. There's a lot of people that go into courses, they learn healing. And they never do, they never go on to become practitioners or healers, but they do it for themselves. Why is that? Because deep down, the healing is really for themselves. Deep down, when one person changes their vibration, it affects thousands of people around them. When one per person heals themselves, it only takes one person to heal themselves to have a, a global effect to have such an impact on humanity. So sometimes as, as people go through their healing process, that's what's reaching the tipping point. Each of us that is doing the work on ourselves. 
not everybody is doing the work, but that's also okay because people are in a different, some people, some people came in with a purpose to help others and to awaken and to uh, go through their healing and to liberate their consciousness and to be at the forefront, right? And then other people came in to, to, um, <laughs> to let other people go before them and do the hard work. You know, and it's like we've all we're we're all on the same journey. We're just at different points in time of consciousness. So we're at different points in time of understanding the same thing. So it's like if you have a movie and we're watching the movie, but we're watching the movie at different points in time. Does that make sense? We're not even changing the movie. The movie has already happened, right? We're just watching the movie at different points in time and unraveling our consciousness, coming into consciousness. Oh my God, we're, we're going down the rabbit hole. We can go so deep and in so many directions, but I'll, I'll try to bring it back because we're, we're already hitting. Oh, wow, we've gone past the eight o'clock. That's what happens when you're having fun. Are you okay for a few more minutes and we'll, we'll bring it around together? Okay, so that... Third level of consciousness, life happens through me. That's the presence. That's the awakening part where you're waking up inside yourself, where you give up control, you know? So be prior to that, you have a little bit of a controlling nature, just a little bit. And obviously not anybody here on this call, but you know those other people out there. And so really the presence, we're coming into our creativity. And... I'm going to say if we could bring back two things, bring back creativity and bring back intuition. Yeah. So intuition, I feel like it's this is the time where we got to bring back intuition. Intuition has been disconnected for people, right? Like, like especially for women. Women are the oracles. Women are the oracles of intuition. And it's been suppressed. It's been hidden and suppressed. And it has been devalued. Intellect has been valued more than, than the right. So the left brain is more the intellect side. And the right brain is more the intuitive side. And they both have a role to play. Not one more than the other. They're, it's the mass and the feminine energy. The right side of the brain is the feminine energy. The left side of the brain is the masculine energy. And the new paradigm that we're in, this shift of consciousness, this moving into our next stage of evolution is where the two sides of the brain come into harmony together, where the mass and the feminine inside of ourselves, they come into peace, peace within. Now, I know it doesn't look like that out in the world. Out in the world, it looks like there's not a lot of peace out there. But the world is a reflection of our inner disharmony. So if we want to bring peace into the world, we have to bring peace inside ourselves. We have to end the conflict within ourselves. So I'll just drop a golden nugget on you. Uh, so a quick golden nugget, and I've mentioned this, but a quick golden nugget is what happens when you stop fighting with the things that you think are fighting with you? What happens when I stop fighting with the things that I think are fighting with me, right? Then we, we unravel our defensiveness. We unravel, we unravel the ego. We unravel the wounds because it's really we're fighting with ourselves. And when we stop fighting with the self, then that will affect the global consciousness. That will affect the collective consciousness. So you say, well, how are you fighting with yourself? Well, you know, you could be fighting with someone over a mask or a vaccine or whatever it might be, but that fight is inside of you, right? That, that fight, you're fighting sometimes with an idea, right? People should do this. No, people should do this. You're fighting with these ideas. So as we come back into, into intuition and presence, there is no fight in the present moment. There just is. There's just love. There's just acceptance in the present moment. And so 
our intuition is coming alive. Our intuition is in overdrive right now. It's, it's on steroids. It's waking up inside of people. Your healing abilities are being activated. They're being, they're being triggered. They're being opened up. You know, your, your frequencies like reason, love, joy, peace is like being amplified, is being activated. But because of the polarities, you're maybe also experiencing all the challenge, the fear, the guilt, the shame. That's not happening to punish you. The fear, guilt, shame coming up in your life right now is just simply being purged. You can't bring it with you in the higher vibrations. You cannot bring fear, guilt and shame with you into love and peace it doesn't exist there if you have love in your heart and you're in fear and guilt at the same time then the love isn't in your heart it's in your mind right but when you integrate it and it's in your body when love is in your heart and you're in your body there is no fear there is no guilt there is no shame it doesn't exist in the present moment Boom, <laughs> right? So that's the third level of consciousness. And then the fourth level is life happens as me. And that's the oneness. That's the end of separation, right? That's, that's what we're speaking to now where, you know, like I said, if we, if we take one, one thing like love, you're not, you're not giving love and receiving love. You're simply being love. That's why we say we're human beings, not human doings. Because when I'm giving love to you and I'm wanting to get it back, I'm doing something. That's intellectual. But being, when you're being love, you're just simply being love, right? You're being love. Because that's, now you're integrating love. Like, and by integrating, I'm, I'm not saying that you're receiving love. Love is already what you are. There is nothing to receive. You are already love. But yet we're not receiving it because there's parts of ourselves that feel shame or guilt or fear. And we won't allow ourselves to love ourselves in those places, you know. And so this process of explore your spirituality is bringing us through these levels of consciousness to um that what if just being here is enough what if being is enough what if being is love and what if that is enough boom <laughs> right what if being is enough right and it's it's that's the philosophy and now you got to earn it you got to practice it you got to you got to do the practices Right, you gotta breathe, you gotta slow down, you gotta interrupt the programs, you know. And if it's if it's something that you want to investigate further and you want to look at, well, okay, well, how can I explore you know this inside of me, or how can I explore my purpose? Well, I think like when people are drawn to when you're drawn to webinars like this, when you're drawn to books on the present moment, on spirituality, when you've been drawn to these things throughout your life, I think that you don't have to think too hard about what your purpose is. You know, sometimes our purpose is not specifically for us, but it's to be of service. It's to be of service. And, and we can deny it and we can invite it and we can go and do other jobs. But life will keep circling back around until you realize that your purpose here is to be of service. Where you put down the ego, you put down the self, and you say, how can I be of service? And at that, at that point, you know, we start to, you're learning, you're learning ways of, okay, how can I be of service to others? And I think there's no more beautiful act than healing. You know, and if it if healing calls out to you, if it resonates with you, you know, I've seen people get into healing, learn healing, and then stop for a few years to do the healing on themselves, and then out of nowhere, suddenly it restarts, and they're like, "Oh my God, I'm ready. I've got to help people." <laughs> you know, and that like it's there's no right, there's no wrong, there's no push, there's no force. 
it's just an invitation, an invitation to be of service, to learn healing. So if healing is something you're interested in learning, please check out my courses. I have a level one bioenergy coming up in May. I have a level two bioenergy coming up in May and I have a level three bioenergy coming up in May. So May seems to be quite the popular month. I have a healing evening on this April in uh, I think it's next week. And um, I'll post a link below the video and you'll be able to uh, check out the um, uh, different events that I have on on Linktree and um, also on my website, daltonsbio.com. If you go to daltonsbio.com, you'll see any of my courses or the events that are coming up. And um, I also have an Instagram page that has has the events on as well. And um, But thank you, everybody, for tuning in here tonight. I'm going to stop recording. If you have any questions or you want to talk a little longer, please feel free to stay on. For those who are on YouTube, thank, thank you for tuning in. If you've enjoyed the talk, please like and subscribe, maybe even share and give us some feedback. Thank you so much, everybody.